Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you uh, a really cool way to solve quadratic equations uh, called the quadratic method. And uh, this method is uh, actually something that was sort of put together or written up by this guy here. And this guy's name is uh, Dr. Po Shen Lo, who's the associate professor of math or an associate professor of math at Carnegie Mellon University. And uh, essentially what Dr. Lo did was he was looking for more thoughtful and interesting ways of explaining high school math. And so one night in uh, September 2019, he was just kind of looking at uh, solving quadratic equations and he stumbled upon this method, which we'll call the quadratic method, that helps you to uh, be able to factor quadratic expressions or quadratic equations um, without having to resort to sort of a guess and test method. So let's just see how this works. So I've got this equation here um, and it goes a little something like this, x squared minus 10x minus 144 equals zero. Now, um, like I, I realize that you're not going to necessarily give students uh, in Math 10C, Math 20-1-2, you know, an equation like this. Maybe you will, but this, this is typically not the type of equation that you would give them. You would give them smaller numbers, and if they could do it with smaller numbers, you're confident they could do it with bigger numbers. But the reason why I'm using bigger numbers here is I want to show you that this method works with big numbers. And if it works with big numbers, it's definitely going to work with small numbers. Okay, so here's how it works. Normally how we proceed is we'll go, okay, we need to think of two numbers whose product is equal to negative 144 and whose sum is equal to negative 10. Okay, and so now here's where the guesswork comes in, right? So you're thinking, okay, is it, uh, I can start with 12 and 12, and then from there maybe I can go with, um, I don't know, like let's say 4 and uh, 36 or, you know, whatever, and you're just kind of playing around with these numbers. Well, with the quadratic method, you don't actually need to guess and test. Here's how it works. Uh, instead, of, instead of looking for two numbers that, first of all, have a product of negative 144, and then figuring out if it adds up to negative 10, we're actually going to reverse that and figure out, uh, and think of two numbers that add up to negative 10. And it's actually really easy because you can just take negative 10 and divide it into two parts, negative 5 and negative 5, and, and there you have it. Okay, so here's what I mean. So what you're going to do is you're going to go negative 5 and negative 5. Okay, now negative 5 plus negative 5, automatically negative 10, but hey, how do you know it's not negative 7 and negative 3 or negative 2.5 and negative 7.5? Okay, so, so here's the thing. We, we don't know that, but we're going to go, and, and in fact, um, negative 5 times negative 5 is not going to give you negative 144, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to add some number u to the first negative 5, and then we're going to subtract that same number u from the second negative 5. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so, so the cool thing is, is what we have here is a difference of squares, and that is key to this method. Now, negative 5 plus u plus negative 5 so far is negative 10 plus u minus u would be negative 10. So we do have two numbers here that add up to negative 10. And um, I've written them as binomials, which when multiplied together should give me negative 144. Okay, see how that works? we've got an equation here with one unknown. So we could solve for u, we figure out u, boom, we've got the two numbers, right? So, um, and in fact, it's easy to solve. And, and I realize you're looking at this going, well, wait a minute, you got to solve a quadratic equation in order to solve the original quadratic equation. So you're making more work for yourself. Well, you are and you aren't, right? You're totally skipping the guess and test stage and you're going straight to uh, some, I guess it's an algorithm, right? That you just follow the steps and it will work. Lots of students like this, right? So you're going to go and expand the left-hand side. So we end up with a difference of squares. So I get 25 minus u squared equals negative 144. When you isolate u squared, you get u squared is equal to 169, and you get u is equal to 13. Uh, now, you could also get u is equal to negative 13, but it's going to end up being the same regardless, okay? So uh, we'll go with the principal root, u is equal to 13, so then I can sub in u here and here, and I end up with negative 5 plus 13 times negative 5 minus 13, uh, and I end up with 8, and I end up with negative 18. So those are my two numbers. Look at that. 8 times negative 18, negative 144, 8 plus negative 18, negative 10, boom, I figured out those answers. So then uh, the original equation here ends up factoring like a so. x plus 8, x minus 18 equals 0, and if you had to solve this, x equals negative 8, comma, 18. Okay, now how cool is school? Okay, all right. So um, now you're looking at this going, okay, I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to stick with my original uh, way of teaching this. Um, and that's fine. 
you might even introduce this in a 20 IB or 20 AP class. But maybe there's some students in your regular classes that would really appreciate this method because it totally bypasses the guessing test. And there are some students that are just not that great at the guessing test and would much prefer uh, more of an algorithm. Okay. All right. So let's try another one here. Maybe a little bit of a harder one. Um, unfortunately, the linear term is still negative. But you know what? It doesn't really matter, right? This is just an example. Uh, you could test it out on a quadratic equation where the linear term, the x term, is positive. Okay, so here's what I've got. Uh, I'm going to try to factor this again um, and hope that works. I think this one actually does work, but you know what? It doesn't matter if it doesn't work because the quadratic method will is very versatile and it'll, it'll cover uh, even quadratic equations that don't factor. Okay, so uh, because the leading coefficient on this one is something other than 1, I'm going to factor that out. So I get 2 times x squared uh, minus 9 over 2x plus, if you divide 10 by 2 as well, you get 5 equals zero. Okay, so um, what I have here is equivalent to the original quadratic equation. Uh, now recall what I did here. Uh, I took the linear term, right, because I was focused on the, the sum first. What two numbers sum to negative 10? So I took the linear term and I divided that into two parts, two equal parts. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll take the linear term negative 9 halves and divide that into two equal parts. So then I'll end up with uh, negative 9 over 4 and negative 9 over 4. Okay, so when I add those two together, I end up with negative 9 halves, but then I'm going to add a u to this one and subtract a u from this one, and that's got to be equal to this. When I say that's got to be equal to, I mean negative 9 quarters plus u times negative 9 quarters minus u has to be equal to positive 5. Okay, so now let's uh, expand the left-hand side, which gives us a difference of squares. So we end up with um, 81 over 16 minus u squared is equal to 5, uh, but let's not write 5 since we're going to have to combine these two constants, and we end up with uh, 80, I believe, uh, n'est-ce pas, 16, uh, 80, okay, so then I end up with u squared is equal to uh, 1 over 16, and u must be equal to 1, as they say in New York, quarter, okay, so u is equal to 1 quarter. Um, so where am I? Okay, so if u is equal to 1 quarter, I'm going to plug this back in here. So I have negative 9 quarters plus a quarter, and then I've got negative 9 quarters minus a quarter. Okay, so we end up with, uh, what is this, negative 2, and we end up with uh, negative 10. Ooh, okay, so this is negative 10 quarters, which is negative 5 over 2. Okay, so those are our two numbers. Uh, that we need to use that have a product of 5 and a sum of negative 9 halves. Okay, so then when I put this back together, I end up with, I end up with 2, let's just split here, 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 5 halves, or as they say in New York, 5 halves. So uh, we end up with x minus 2 and 2x minus 5, see? Okay, and school is really cool now. Okay, like I just can't stop smiling. This is so awesome. Okay, let's try one more example. Okay, like you're going to be able to make it through a 10-minute video. But here's another one. Okay, so again, 2x squared. Uh, I really should stop it with the... Uh, here, can I, can I get away with this? Plus 4x minus 7 equals 0 b squared minus 4 times a times c. Yeah, that's still going to give us solutions, right? But this one, pretty sure this one doesn't factor. Okay, so let's see what happens. Let's uh, get rid of this 2. Uh, x squared plus 2x minus 7 halves. Okay, very interesting. And then now I'm going to go and split 2. So that's going to be 1 plus u times 1 minus u is going to be equal to negative 7 halves. And uh, difference of squares, right? So you understand where the 1 comes from, right? It's splitting 2 into two equal parts. So I have 1 minus u squared is equal to negative 7 halves. Um, and I get, uh, what is this? u squared is equal to 9 halves. Okay. And I get u is equal to uh, root 3. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, I get, uh-oh. 3, I should say, over root 2. Okay, 
uh, aka 3 root 2 over 2. Okay, so awesome. It didn't quite work out, but now that's my u, so I can plug that back in here and here. So I end up with 1 plus 3 root 2 over 2, and I end up with uh, 1 minus 3 root 2 over 2. See? Okay, so then, then here's the thing. So if I were to write this out in factored form, I'd end up with 2 uh, x plus 1 plus 3 root 2 over 2, and x uh, minus, uh, wrong, 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 x plus 1 minus 3 root 2 over 2. Okay, and all of that equals 0. Okay, so then x must be equal to, wait for it, negative 1 minus 3 root 2 over 2 and negative uh, 1 plus 3 root 2 over 2. There you have it, folks. The quadratic method brought to you by Dr. Po Shen Lo from Carnegie Mellon University. Take care.